Well guys, we're going to be talking about the thrombosis is going to be formation of a blood clot in a blood vessel. So imagine this blood vessel, this is going to be the red indicated blood clot. And this, the main thing is that it obstructs the blood flow. Now, the second thing is going to be the definition of hemostasis. So hemostasis has a lot to do with blood clotting. So hemostasis is basically uh, when your body is in a state that if there is some sort of injury, it's able to respond to it. So it can, for example, physiological process, so it's physiological, it's not pathological or and it, it, it causes the stopping of bleeding and first stages of healing. So you know, we wondering what are the four stages of healing. So first of all, healing is going to be first of all inflammation, then there can be wound healing, and then there can be some sort of uh, regeneration or remodeling. So re is very important. So hemostasis, then we can see inflammation, then we can see proliferation. So this can be of the myofibrillars, yeah, this can be formation of granulation tissue, and this can be starve or remodeling. So um, re regeneration or repair. So in this scenario, it's going to be repair. Uh, hemostasis and thrombosis. Hemostasis is, like I mentioned previously, basically a physiological process. It's going to be between the like between the injury factors and between the physiological factors. If there's a balance between the two, that's hemostasis. So this is a tightly regular process which maintains blood flow while rapidly formation a plug at the site of vascular injury. Now, what is thrombus? So thrombus can be done with platelets, the, the platelets, the coagulation factors, and the Platelets coagulation factors and the um, platelets coagulation factor and the uh, I'm forgetting this one, which is the blood vessel wall. So yeah, coagulation. Yeah. Now, guys, let's move on to now what is normal hemostasis. So, guys, normal hemostasis is going to be basically activation, and that causes platelets to normal hemostasis is an activation causes platelets to uh, after a vascular injury they can go and adhere to the subendothelial collagen when they do some adhesion to the subendothelial collagen then they can um, they can uh, then they can add uh, then that will be the, that'll basically be the primary hemostasis and then from there you can build on to the secondary hemostasis so after vascular injury you get vasoconstriction and after endothelial injury you you get uh, a, a highly uh, a th thrombogenic um, subendothelial collagen which allows platelets to adhere and then uh, so what do i mean by any of this so essentially yeah so when we have and this is some pictures from uh, uh, google so when you have damage to the endothelium this causes uh, a vasoconstriction to occur so we might wonder how does it happen so basically imagine this black as the nerve fibers and this innervating into the blood vessel wall so from the sympathetic nervous system they release like norepinephrine which then causes inhibition of, of nitric oxide which is a piece of dieter, and it causes more more and more uh constriction so yeah norepinephrine atp there are many different types of stuff so vasoconstriction and then after endothelial injury then you can get some sort of plate adhesion so what is going to be activation activation is first of all plate these are six steps so platelet adhesion uh, platelets will change their shape second will be degranulation third will be these platelets will adhere to each other the fourth will be the activation of the extrinsic pathway which is going to be the tissue factor and the, the fifth and i believe the yeah am i saying this right yeah so change in shape so Essentially, platelets are round, uh, a small round, and then they become flat. That marks increased surface area, decreased granulation, and then there's going to be recruit additional platelets to form a primary platelet plug. And then tissue factor three, which is going to be produced by endothelial damage, is a membrane that has it is a procoagulant which activates extrinsic um, coagulation uh, pathway. Extrinsic cascade leads to thrombin and um, Leads to thrombin. Thrombin causes fibrinogen into fibrin and forming a fibrin network de deposition. Fibrin causes uh, further platelet recruitment and granule uh, forming uh, secondary to the permanent plug. So that's essentially what's going to be happening here is that there's going to be recruit additional platelets and uh, to the primary uh, hemostatic uh, plug. And, and 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 this produced by the endothelial damage is, is a membrane bound procoagulant which activates the extrinsic coagulation cascade so yeah it leads to thrombin and thrombin uh, thrombin uh, cascade fibrinogen to fibrin uh, uh, forming a fibrin network uh, 
uh, and a deposition thrombin um, thrombin causes a further treated and recruitment and granular release from your secondary tougher permanent plug so yes so you're going to be essentially changing shape more increased degranulation this will cause more addition to be excreted uh, thrombin tissue factor 3 is going to be produced by endothelial damage and then there's going to be an extrinsic uh, cascade which leads to uh, formation of thrombin uh, and thrombin cascade called uh, cascade fibrin into a fibrin to form fibrin network so yeah and and then run release and then there's going to be secondary to permanent plug so yeah so change shape more let me just review change shape becomes flatter and that becomes uh, less surface area degranulation so you're releasing granules so release 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 that causes more platelets to adhere so uh, pl platelet comes adheres at sorry adheres 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 and then after that we can get some sort of a um um, uh, we can get from the end damage and the theory. So from damage and the we get tissue factor three release that causes uh, more amount of leaches to come. Mm, that causes the uh, that causes the extrinsic coagulation cascade, and th and then the end result of coagulation cascade is thrombin. Thrombin then co converts fibrinage into fibrin. Fibrin then forms a fibrin network, and then they this causes further platelet recruitment. So I've illustrated over here fibrin network. You can imagine this here and a granular release and this form is a permanent plug then the next thing is going to be endothelial cell and antiplatelet and anticoagulation so what i mean by endothelial cells their natural uh, characteristic is that they are antiplatelet anticoagulant and they don't want to do thrombosis but after an injury after vasoconstriction and as we spoke previously also after a uh, after really after their um uh platelets it here uh the, the, this this can be what is the reason for their injury so this can be too in, infectious or this can be due to some sort of a hemodynamic factors or some cytokines which damage endothelial cells so key word over here is damage endothelial cells anything that causes damage to endothelial cells is the ant is like causing coagulation one really important factor is when the endothelial cells they cause a platelet adhesion and, and cofactors for binding platelets to the uh, collagen loss and the exposes previously deposited five exposes previously deposited one million found factor and allows circulating one million factor into the basement membrane allowing platelets to adhere via glycoprotein 1b so yeah one million one factor when there's endothelial injury leads to platelet adhesion and this uh, is a cofactor for platelets to platelets to binding platelets to coagulate um, loss of uh, endothelium previously exposes previously the positive one million one factor and allows circulating one million one factor to bind to the base membrane allows proteins to adhere via protein one b so yeah now there can be endothelial injury endothelial injury can be there for vascular damage and then there can be also endothelial injury can also be there for the uh, uh, endothelial injury can also be there for for example vascular or they can be extrinsic so vascular we can speak hemodynamic uh, that can be turbulent flow there can be hypertension and hemodynamic factors turbulent flow and hypertension uh, the next thing is going to be um, um tur tur turbulent flow uh, and and uh, some sort of like uh, yep um uh, this anything loss of endothelium leads to exposure of subendothelial collagen which is going to be a subendothelium which is going to be anything underneath endothelium so basically is very very coagulant it's very very sticky to say the least so um yeah and then there can be homocysteine there can be bacteria there can be uh, any what else can cause endothelial damage they can be hypochloremia, they can be cigarette smoke and atherosclerotic plaque. Just so remember, as a bacteria, hemocysteine, which also causes atherosclerosis, then hypochloremia, which also causes atherosclerosis, and it can be plaque, uh, they can be chemicals in cigarette smoke. Then there can be alteration of blood flow, which can be. Uh, uh, alteration so like I said the record triangle is endothelial damage hypercoagulant state and then there can be some sort of stasis or turbulent so vascular may stasis or turbulent and in uh, cardiovascular we can speak about a 
hypertrophic aneurysms lead to stasis. There can be acute myocardial infarction. Again, stasis, hyperviscosity. So, for example, polycythemia, increased resistance to flow, stasis, uh, and uh, thrombus formation, which provides stenosis, which leads to dilation of the left atrium. For a child. So let's review this again. So alteration of blood flow, how can that happen? So either you're becoming slow or either you're becoming rough. So stasis and turbulent. Then we're going to lead to uh, our cardiovascular. So cardiovascular, how does that happen? Four ways. So the, any type of way, there can be stasis, acute myocardial infarction, acute myocardial infarction leads to collagen, deep weakening of the wall, formation of an aneurysm, which can also lead to stasis, mitral valve stenosis, which can lead to left atrium sten uh, dilatation, which can lead to some sort of Co coagulation stasis and another form of stasis can be um, uh, hyperviscosity. So your bone marrow is producing too many blood cells that produce a polycythemia varia, which leads to stasis. Stasis, 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 stasis. It's very important word over here. Um, uh, so hypercoagulability. Hypercoagulability can be primary and secondary. So what do I mean by this? So primary is that you have some mutation. So when hypercoagul is when your body wants to make too much thrombus, too much thrombus. How does that happen? Mutations. Mutations in what? So we're going to be focusing over here on the common pathway. So factor number five, which I believe so is very important to form uh, pro-thrombin to thrombin. So uh, you, it results in an inactive, inactive factor five and um, an inactive factor five that can't be cleaved. So this factor five cannot be cleaved. So and um, and can't be activated by protein C. This this is an anti is an important anti thrombin uh, pathway. So what what do I mean by any of this? So basically, this guy over here is going to be our factor five. So for example, and this is our protein C. So okay. So factor five is always like it's always activated, uh, and so a factor five is always causing blood clots, blood clots, blood clots, blood clots, and then it's factor C which is supposed to inhibit it and prevent blood clots, so prevent blood clots, let's put this on the side, that it cannot be cleaved, but it cannot be eaten up, it cannot be cleaved by protein C. So now the secondary hyper, uh, hypercoagulability, so that's anything like your diet and stuff like that. So that can be estrogen, oral pumped receptors, which I believe controls estrogen, smoking and obesity, and um, uh, and also obviously this the disseminated coagulabilities or like yeah so that can release procoagulants so these are basically tumors so you have estrogens that's something diet then you have something like kind of like diet from your respiratory smoking and obesity and the third thing is obviously uh, some cancer which is like like okay that's internal fair enough which releases procoagulants uh, okay now what else can there be mm. uh, yeah fate of thrombosis the um, fate of thrombosis if the patient survives initial uh, uh, initial thrombus that can lead to propagation a thrombi accumulation and additional platelets lead to vessel obstruction and then there can be embolism there can be dissolution of the thrombi can be reduced by fibrinated activity so yeah so basically the thrombus can go further which can be embolism it can lead to dissolution of the thrombi and then there can be propagation accumulates uh, uh, additional factors, uh, additional places leading to vessel obstruction, uh, and so yeah, that can occur. And then there can be organization and recanalization, thrombi induced um, inflammation, fibrosis, recanalization, and leading to a thickened vessel wall or sub endothelial collagen. So, what do I mean by any of this? So, thrombosis. Thrombus can lead to embolism, so this thrombus goes to a distant site. What else can I mean by this? So it can lead to fibrinated activity. So this thrombus over here, it can be realized by like a fibrinated activity. So if we just put like some sort of a um, I don't know, what what other ways can I talk about uh, this? Some sort of so this can be removed. What other ways can I talk about thrombus? Is that it 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 uh, accumulates too much if the thrombus is like beneath. So I'll make the thrombus small and it, it's beneath and it. It, and it accumulates more platelets so it would become a uh, it could lead to like some sort of ischemia or uh, obstruction and what else can i mean over here so let's say this is the thrombus let's make it a bit smaller and there can be organization or recanalization so this it, there can be holes inside this 
so you can make it like smaller now and and it's going to be incorporated into a thickened vest uh, subendothelial or uh, in the vessel wall or subendothelial now complication classifications and co and complication classifications and the exceptions so complications in the atria what do you get when you have a thrombus in the in the atrial uh, places so essentially what you get in the thrombus of an atrial place is that you can get obviously ischemia what can you get from the venous? You can get deep vein thrombosis, a pulmonary embolism, pulmonary embolism. You can in ischemia, you can get necrosis or infarction. Um, then classifications. So compos no, no, no comp complications. Okay. Now what we're going to talk about is going to be classifications. So what are the different types of? So mural thrombus is going to be like okay, for example, in the uh, in the cardiovascular system, stasis. And there's going to be dilatation of the ventricular wall, and then there can be occlusive thrombus, which is going to be essentially when you're going to have uh, typical for veins and small arteries. Then the composition of the thrombus can be red blood cells, platelets, white blood cells potentially, fibrin, very important. So red blood cells, white blood cells, throm thrombocytes, fibrin, and then there can be red thrombus. Red thrombus may probably contains more platelets, and white thrombus contains. Uh, it's going to be red blood cells, which is the red color, and then there can be white white, white, white thrombus, which is going to be typical for basically you don't, you have le less red blood cells, your platelets are fibrin. Um, and now, so yeah, so what's the difference in red thrombus? Um, so first of all, we talked about location, so atria and venous. The second thing we talked about was the uh, what are different types. So they can be mural, and also they can be uh, occlusive, and then the combination red and white. So they can be red. Red is the one with the uh, platelets and the fibrin, and the white is the one with uh, platelets and fibrin as well. Sorry, red is going to be the one with platelets, fibrin, and red blood cells, which is important for venous thrombuses. And whereas this one is going to just be platelets and red fibrin. So now, questions for you guys: What is the definition of hemostasis? Hemostasis is essentially just a process by which there can be um. Yeah, what is hemostasis guys so yeah it's going to be basically it's going to be a physiological process where there's going to be from these stages of remodeling so it's going to be really involved in the remodeling it's going to be the first stage of healing so that's hemostasis uh what's the second question what is a change in uh, shape of plates describe the shape so it goes from round to flat and what's the purpose of that increase surface area so we talked about over here round to flat increase surface area um um what is going to what happens after degranulation so we talked also about that it leads to adhesion it recruits platelets primary it's a weak coagulated plug okay what is the function of endothelial cells so they are anti-coagulant now the fourth question and the fifth question is what happens after injury so as we learned a uh, platelet adhesion and vasoconstriction uh what is the uh what process of one removing one factor after endothelial injury Yes, it, when there's exposure of endothelial collagen, it causes there to be binding to the platelets. Uh, let's endothelial injuries. So, yeah, tell me endothelial injuries. As we said previously, they can be divided. Um, they can be divided vascular and cardiovascular, or no, vascular and external. So, vascular are three, and external are five. And I want you guys to name all of them with me. So, first one, hypertension, turbulent flow. Exposure subendothelial collagen. Now tell me the five external. So but we'll talk about uh, anything outside. So homocysteine urea, so deficiency in folic acid. Then we're going to talk to you guys about uh, endotoxins released from bacteria. Then I want to talk about the remaining three, which is already atherosclerosis. So atherosclerosis itself, and there can be BCG in smoking, cigarette smoking, and the last one is going to be cholesterol. Yep, simple. And then tell me, guys, the, what happens? List the alterations to blood flow. So, what are the two main alterations? Yes, uh, stasis and turbulent. You're correct over there. I mean, I hope you guys are correct over there. And then uh, stasis and turbulent. And then tell me the more amount of uh, blood flow alterations, which we discussed about. Um, yeah. So, but those are four of the heart. So, uh, sorry, four of the heart. So that can be. Of the uh, first one can be of the acute myocardial infarction aneurysms. I mean, yeah, okay, aneurysms, and then there can be two more, which is our um, hyperviscosity and metrolar stenosis. Yes. Secondary hypercoagulability. What is DC? So disseminated coagulopathy. 
this is a pro component and what is organization recolonization so that is going to be the fate of the thrombus which are four and that can lead to uh, incorporating to passive one and submitting to the swelling so guys thank you very much for watching and i hope you guys found this useful